The pants had bold parrot feathers from ankle to knee and leopard print going up her thighs to her sports bra. Her tummy muscles were visible and she wore a big smile. Her blonde hair was in a ponytail. Ah, that's quite an outfit. Do you like it? It's my first time wearing it, she said, sliding her hands over the fabric. Tyson felt strange about being excited by her. It was odd to feel this way about someone so young. Yes, I mean, it's very nice. You look good. We should go, Tyson said, trying to look elsewhere. She walked out with a satisfied smile and his eyes went to her lower back. He admired her, but stopped himself quickly. He locked up and saw her looking at him too. She blushed when he caught her. Her eyes widened a bit when she saw his growing interest. Tyson tried to act normal as they walked down the road. He turned left and Christy walked beside him. He saw her happy face and frowned, confused. Isn't a gym better for a workout? And your new outfit would be appreciated more by people your age. She bit her lip to hide her smile then shook her head. The gym gets boring. It's nice to be outside sometimes, she said with a big smile. Also, you're in amazing shape, more than anyone at our gym. He looked surprised, but she nodded. You are really fit. For someone almost 60, you mean, he said. She raised her hands. No, you just look great. I don't see you as old at all. They walked in silence as he thought about what she said. He was flattered, but reminded himself he was older. She had her whole life ahead. They reached the end of the road, near where the old train crossing was. Tyson paused, thinking about the unlikely events of that night. Is this the spot? Christy asked softly. He nodded and walked east, pointing to where they found him after the crash. They stopped by a stone with a manny's name on it. It wasn't her grave, but the town put it here to honor her. Tyson kept moving, starting a light jog to leave the memories behind. The pain in his knee was manageable. Christy jogged beside him, watching him. He looked over and she gave him a sympathetic smile. Please don't. Sorry, she whispered. They jogged until Tyson had to walk because his knee hurt. What's wrong with your knee? She asked. It needs replacing, he said gruffly. I hear it's a common surgery now, she offered. He nodded, but didn't say more. It wasn't the surgery that scared him but the drive to the hospital. A psychologist had told him he could overcome it with therapy, but he hadn't gone back since he left the hospital. Tyson felt like his life was on pause. I could give you a ride if you want. No, sorry, no, I don't. Drive a ride in cars, Tyson insisted. She was quiet again, and he tried not to look at her, but he had to. She wasn't disappointed. She felt sorry for him. That felt worse. Don't. Listen, I don't need your pity. I don't want it, he said, but his voice was shaky. He fell silent. They walked down the tree-lined street, enjoying the nature around them. If you had to choose a place to stay, you picked well. It's nice here, Christy said softly. Tyson looked angrily at her, but she didn't back down. He tried to speak, but no words came out. He tried to run, but his knee hurt, so he had to walk again. She walked beside him until they reached the end of the road by the lake. They turned back. Christy looked at the houses along the way. How much does one of these houses cost? She asked. He laughed. You can't buy them. Even if you wanted to, you can't. When she looked confused, he explained. The land is owned by GRT. We can't change the houses or pave the driveways. We lease the houses and we can pass the lease to a family member. The original owners of GRT wanted family homes. There's a lot of money tied up in this land. The lease ends in 60 years and then one of two things will happen. GRT might kick everyone out and sell the land for a fortune. Big mansions will replace these small houses. What's the other option? She asked. Some say GRT will lease it again to the current owners with the same rules. He saw her surprised look. Things were fine between the town council and GRT until the accident and lawsuit. The council tried to take the land around the lake and forest. 
instead they got a new road for their own new subdivision. This made things worse between them and GRT. Foolish and greedy. So those houses I saw earlier are mostly owned by town council members, he said grimly. They walked on in silence for a bit, Christy deep in thought. Blake's mother is on the town council, and his father is a real estate developer, she finally said. He saw the worry in her eyes and just shrugged. Better she knew now than later. When they got back to his place, Tyson's knee hurt badly. He shouldn't have tried to run. He saw his neighbor, Mrs. Willoughby, working on a flower bush. He remembered she liked to be called by her first name. Good afternoon, Barbara. She looked up, smiling wider when she saw Christy. Good afternoon, Tyson. Nice to see you with such lovely company. He sighed. This is Christy Taylor. She's at university in town and George asked me to help her with math. Christy, this is Barbara Willoughby, my neighbor. Christy shook hands with Barbara, sharing smiles. So glad you're teaching again, Barbara said happily. He's an amazing teacher. He's helped me understand everything, and now I know I'll pass my finals, Christy said just as happily. Tyson gave both women a frustrated look as they smiled at him. I'm not going back to teaching. This was just a favor for George, Barbara pouted. That would be a shame. You're so talented. That's my choice, he said firmly. The women exchanged looks, and Tyson was done. Have a good evening, Barbara, he said and walked up his driveway. He heard Christy say goodbye and follow him. He opened the door and held it for her. He saw Barbara still watching, so he waved before going inside. He locked the door and heard Christy sigh behind him. He turned and froze as she was now making herself comfortable, taking off her shoes and stretching her arms. What? What are you doing? He asked. She smiled at him. Just getting comfortable. Thanks for all your help today, she said sitting down on the couch. He looked at her feeling a mix of emotions. You can't just she moved closer and smiled. I think I can, she said, calmly watching him. Tyson was caught off guard as she leaned in and gave him a hug. It had been so long since he'd felt close to someone. Christie's touch was warm and friendly, and only then did he realize how much he had missed this. Tyson suddenly realized what was happening and tried to step away from the young woman. No, Christy shouted. She dropped to her knees and pulled his pants down. She saw him and grinned. Oh yes, that's better, she said, then took him into her mouth. Wow, Tyson cried out. He had never experienced this before since his wife, Imani, never wanted to do it for him. Christy was very eager and used her hands to stroke what she couldn't fit into her mouth. This caused a big problem for Tyson. It had been more than five years since he had been with someone else. He knew he wouldn't last long. No, not at all. Christy, Christy, it's too good. I'm going to finish, he gasped. She looked up at him with excited blue eyes and made a happy sound. That extra feeling pushed Tyson over the edge. Oh my God, he growled as he released into Christy's mouth. She swallowed quickly and cleaned him once he was done. He pulled away because he was too sensitive. Christy stood up with a keen look in her eyes. Can you give as good as you get? He blinked at her, but he knew what she meant. Did he want to do this? With her? Now that she had given him the best oral experience ever, he felt he should return the favor. Looking at her attractive body, he realized he really wanted to. Not thinking much more, he grabbed her hand, took her across the living room and into the bedroom. He stopped next to the bed and pulled her close to kiss her. She moaned as his hands moved down her back and over the cloth covering her behind. He squeezed her bottom with his big hands, which made her moans louder. He stopped kissing her and dropped to his knees. He slowly pulled her pants down her long legs. He was surprised to see only a small patch of blonde hair above her private area. He looked up and saw her biting her lip as she watched him. You are so beautiful. Tyson sighed. Her nervousness disappeared and she pulled his face towards her, eager to feel his mouth on her. He smiled and gently pushed her. Her legs hit the bed and she fell back onto the mattress. 
He took off her shoes and pants completely as she lifted herself up a bit, pouting at him. When his lips touched the insides of her knees, her pout became a gasp, then louder sounds as he kissed and licked his way up her inner thighs. Tyson, oh my god, Tyson, I need your mouth on me, she begged as he got closer. He kissed her mound, her hips lifted off the mattress and she moaned with need. He knew what his wife liked, and while Christy seemed more sensitive, he had to be gentler for now. When he sucked on her lower lips, she cried out and held his hair with both hands. He touched her opening with a finger as his tongue explored. He listened to her sounds, learning what she liked. When he slipped a wet finger into her and gently sucked on her sensitive spot, she cried out again, her body lifting off the mattress. He rubbed the finger along her inside until he found the spot that made her shake. She tried to pull his head closer as her cries got higher and higher. Oh yes, yes, that's it, right there. Now Tyson went for it. He added a second finger and increased his licking and sucking. Christy couldn't make any sound as the pleasure took over her. He felt her body shaking with the intense feelings. He slid his free hand up her stomach, cupped one of her breasts, and gently tugged on her stiff nipple. Oh my God, she screamed as she returned to her senses. Her hand landed on his on her breast, holding it tight as she kept feeling the pleasure. Finally, she pushed at his head and he moved back, pulling his fingers out. He licked them clean as she watched, panting and trembling. She lay back on the bed and closed her eyes, coming down from the high. He stood up and watched her rest. A small voice in his head asked him what the heck he was doing. He had a sudden moment of clarity and almost stumbled from the realization. He was no longer thinking with his desires, and his rational mind was upset. She was so much younger. He'd never been a flirt before. Yet here he was, satisfied from a beautiful young woman he had just met. What made him change his behavior? She was beautiful and smart, but they were from different worlds. They had nothing in common. Even their values were different. Though he had been alone for a little more than five years and was a widower, he still wore his wedding band. He did not need to be faithful to his late wife, but he felt a vague guilt, like he broke some unwritten rule. What's wrong? He looked to the woman leaning back on her elbows once more. His mind told him to stop, even though his desires were difficult to ignore. I, I don't know why I did that, he said, his heart feeling heavy in his chest. You're overthinking it, she replied, seeing his confused look. I think you're attractive and smart. Do you think I am? Yes, I do, he admitted awkwardly. She smiled. That's all it needs to be. Just a fun time, no strings attached. I'd like to see what you can do with that, she said, motioning toward his body. Still feeling unsure, he nodded and went into the bathroom. He turned on the shower and let the water run. He flinched when he felt her hands on his back. Turning around, he saw her smiling at him. He wanted to explain why this was a bad idea, but she kissed him. Her kiss was so intoxicating. He found himself kissing her back, and his hands moved to her chest. She reacted with surprise and pleasure. He pulled back from her lips and took her nipple into his mouth. She cried out and pressed him closer. Tyson needed her. Now. He turned off the shower, then picked her up. She wrapped herself around him as he carried her out of the bathroom. He set her on the counter and pulled her close. She reached between them, guiding him to her. He pushed forward, feeling himself slide inside. He paused with wide eyes. Condom? I'm on the pill. Keep going, she insisted. It felt better than anything he could remember. She was warm, wet, and tight. He couldn't resist anymore. Christy was so excited. His body was strong, and his need was powerful. She sighed in pleasure as he moved deeper. She saw their reflection in the mirror. Watching them together was so exciting. She saw him moving inside her. She gasped when he lifted her legs, changing the angle and making it even better. His body moved faster, and she felt like she was floating. Watching herself in the mirror made it feel even more surreal. But she could feel everything. Every powerful thrust. Every burst of pleasure. 
He was giving her the best time she'd ever had. Then he got intense. His muscles stood out as he doubled his speed. The impact against her made her cry out, but she wanted more. Her orgasm hit her like lightning, sending waves of pleasure through her body. He kept going, and the sensations grew stronger. She could barely think, only feel the bliss. Tyson, oh, so good, she mumbled. Then he pushed in deep one last time and roared. Christy felt his warmth inside her. It was primal, and time seemed to stop. She felt a mix of joy, surrender, and safety. It didn't make sense, but it felt so important. She clung to him, pulling his face down for a gentle kiss. The kisses felt like promises, so she rested his forehead against hers instead. Tyson felt the pleasure easing away as he panted above her. His muscles felt energized, alive like after a tough workout. He hadn't felt this good in a long time. He pulled back gently, and Christy let go of his head. He lowered her arms to her chest, his eyes lingering there. He was still pressing her to the counter, so he carefully moved back. She cried out and panted as he stood. He saw her swollen lips and hoped he hadn't hurt her. She seemed dazed, so he picked her up gently. She sighed, resting her head on his shoulder. Tyson carried her to the bedroom. His brain screamed something familiar. He laid her on the bed. She reached up, pulling him down for a kiss. It was hot and passionate, but tender. As he pulled back, his muscles trembled. Her blue eyes held a question as she felt his shaking. Ashley, young and beautiful like she had been in university. Why hadn't he seen it before? Are you okay? She asked softly. He couldn't speak, so he just nodded. He needed air. Tyson stood by the lake, the cool breeze giving him goosebumps on his bare skin. He wasn't sure how he got there. She really is special. That voice again. He looked up at the sky. It was getting dark, and she was early. He turned to his right and saw Imani. She was standing next to him, almost close enough to touch. He wanted to, but he knew he shouldn't. The wind pushed her hair back, and she looked at him with sad eyes. The lake doesn't want you. Her words felt like a slap, so he stepped back. But the woman inside does. He shook his head, confused, and glanced at the glass patio doors. Inside, wrapped in the comforter from his bed, was Christy. What do you mean? He turned back to Amani, but she was gone. Trying to talk to her shook him more than he wanted to admit. He shivered and turned away from the dark waters. His legs carried him across the yard to the back porch and he opened the door to go inside. Christy looked at him with worried blue eyes. He felt he had to tell her. Imani said the lake doesn't want me. Christy touched his chest with her soft hands. She felt the cold on his skin, so she opened the comforter and pulled him inside, warming him with her body. They stood face to face. Who said that? Christy asked. He looked into her eyes and saw only warmth. He didn't want to answer, but something told him it would be okay. Imani. Christy watched him closely, and a small smile appeared on her lips. She's smart. Tell me more about her? She asked, leading him to the couch by the little wood stove. He put another log in the heater, then joined Christy under the quilt. He felt lighter, more at peace. He was ready to talk. And Christy listened. Tyson Kane felt like a new man. Well, maybe not new, but his new knee felt better, and it didn't hurt all the time. Without the pain from his knee surgery, he felt more like himself. It also helped that he had Christy, a beautiful young woman who spent a lot of time with him. Christy Taylor had her hands full with classes and a new part-time job. But whenever she had free time, she visited him at his cottage by the lake. Since that day last year when she surprised him in his backyard, she had become his student, friend, and confidant. Even though she was young, Christy was strong-willed. She made it easier for him to talk about things he kept secret, like the fact that he sometimes saw his dead wife at night. Since he opened up about it, he saw many less, but the visits hadn't stopped completely. Christy told him she believed he might have unfinished business with his wife. 
Their fight was cut short, so this made sense to him. If she had mentioned anything strange, like a seance, he would have sent her away. Tyson chuckled to himself, as if he would really get rid of a beautiful woman who made his life better. He wasn't young anymore, and he didn't have many chances like this. He turned back from his walk and went straight to his backyard, stopping by the lake's edge. Truthfully, he enjoyed Christie's company. He had become a loner after his wife's accident. Even though he was 59 and she was 22, they found comfort in talking about current events, even if they saw things differently. He was learning to listen to her, not just hear what he thought she was saying, and she did the same for him. They shared stories about their daily lives. Or rather, she shared hers, while his days remained mostly the same. Over the past year, Christy had helped him improve his living conditions with small changes. He noticed that she had placed photos of them together in some of the picture frames around his home. The original photos of him and Manny were mostly still there, but Christy added some with her smiling face in more visible spots. She also got him to agree to knee surgery. She took him to the hospital, and a few days later they sent him home. Christy worked with his neighbor Barbara to check on him often during the first weeks after surgery. Later, he found photos of Barbara in some of the frames. He wasn't sure who made the changes. The recovery from his surgery took a long time, but he pushed through the pain until he could walk six miles with little discomfort. He asked his doctor about jogging again. The doctor joked about striking his knee with a hammer, so jogging wasn't an option. For now, walking fast would have to do. The waves looked peaceful this morning. He had already been in the lake earlier. He still made it a part of his daily routine to swim out and back once. But now he didn't wait until he was really tired to head back. Imani had told him the lake didn't want him. Her words scared and embarrassed him, so he no longer pushed himself to the limit in the cold water. These days he came back to the shore as soon as he started feeling tired. He no longer offered his life to the lake. He sighed and turned his back on the beautiful blue water, heading inside for a shower and breakfast. After that, he did something else Christy had introduced him to, chatting with his math friends on an online forum. It took a couple of weeks to get past all the surprised messages about him being alive and condolences for losing his wife. Finally, they started talking about math again. Now he had a few regulars he talked to. It wasn't everyone's idea of exciting conversation, but he enjoyed it. He even got some good ideas he was thinking about. He smiled as he stepped inside. His morning routine continued. Christy Taylor was having another moment of realization. She was sitting in her Mercedes-Benz CC class coupe in the coffee shop parking lot, letting her thoughts come through. She had learned to give her mind time to take in new ideas and viewpoints. This was another lesson from Tyson. This morning she felt thankful for many things, but not for objects. Tyson always said not to attach emotions to things. It made the feelings less important. He never forced his personal beliefs on her. That was just how he chose to live, and his rules made sense to her too. She wasn't looking forward to telling Tyson she had to leave town and wouldn't be able to see him anymore. She had an opportunity waiting for her in New York City, where she'd finish her education and start her career at a big fashion company. It was a step in the right direction. She knew Tyson would be happy for her and very supportive. He'd try to hide how sad he was to see her go, but she still worried about him. He wasn't ready to be alone yet. He still had mental blocks. He couldn't ride in a car and could barely sit in hers in the driveway for more than a few minutes. She sighed. She wanted to find him a new friend. Then she could leave with some peace of mind. She knew he could handle Barbara in small doses, but found her too controlling, and he was right. Barbara's caring nature was too strong. Maybe that was why her own kids didn't visit much. Christy went through her list of friends, trying to find one who might spend time with Tyson and help him overcome his fears. But most of her friends had long-term boyfriends who wouldn't feel comfortable with them spending time with someone as good-looking as Tyson. She squirmed a bit in her seat, thinking of their last date night. She would have a hard time finding a new boyfriend as exciting as Tyson. She pulled her mind back and thought about her friends again. There was Rachel, 
who had just broken up with Chris after getting back with him for the great makeup part.